Why or why not is BYU one of the most disrespected college football programs in the country? Let's ask Brian Logan, our first guest of the day. Brian, CBS Sports says BYU is the fourth most disrespected program in the country. Where do you stand on that? Are they disrespected or are they right where they should be? You know, I, I just I just saw that. Um, I don't I don't think so, man. I don't think that BYU is disrespected as a program. It's hard for me to to really believe that. Um, I, I, especially when you look at on the field and the product that that that, that BYU is able to uh, produce, uh, well respected. You look at all the coaches that give so much so much praise to Coach Men and all. And the guys, and, and, you know, this one's for Jerem, when the coaches say, oh, the guys are 40 years old, that's why they kick our butts and we got to prepare. Uh, I mean, but you, you, all the time you have coaches that speak highly of BYU and say, hey, you know, we can, this is a, a, a team and a game uh, that we can go in and potentially lose, so we got to be, you know, on our best. Um, so from a, I think from a, a on-the-field standpoint, no, not disrespected at all, but Maybe when it comes to getting into a conference, I feel like they are a little bit disrespected. Uh, I know there's certain things that go into, uh, you know, why, why or why not uh, should uh, should BYU be considered for a P5. But I, I feel what BYU can bring to the table to a P5 conference, I don't think that that's really value. I think that's undervalued. Yeah, I I agree with you whole wholeheartedly. I think that BYU has a lot of respect nationally. Uh, they're getting great games on the schedule. It's not because BYU's Troy. It's because it's a P5 equivalent game for SEC and ACC teams. And Big Ten teams like Michigan State want to play BYU. Yet, the disrespect comes in the fact that BYU's not in a Power Five. But in the conversation, right. BYU is always right there. So, to me, to me, that's the only disrespect that BYU gets nationally is they're not in a Power Five. And at some point, they that's, hope to be. That's the, that's the only thing, man. And it's... I think it's. I think we should like BYU should have <laughs> when they go out and travel, have some P5 schools or, or you know like a representative uh, say, hey, you should come to our firesides and see how many how many fans come and travel. Uh, you know, you should you should come see uh, a, a, you know an away game, uh, maybe maybe like a Middle Tennessee State, right? Or when I played in 2009 uh, against Tulane and, and, and New Orleans, it was a home game, man. There is no fans there for the other teams. And so, you know, maybe maybe that's what BYU should do to say, hey, you know, look what we can bring to the table. Look at our, our fan base, our following. And even that, when I, I remember when I signed my scholarship, my letter of intent to come here to be, and play for BYU, I, I had two friends, one that played for Cal, and he was like, oh, man, those are some, those are some good dudes. And even I had a friend that played for Oregon. Uh, 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 Ward, he, uh, Teron Ward, plays for uh, the the uh, the Cleveland Browns and got drafted for the Cleveland Browns. He said, "Man, those are some those are some good white boys, man. That's some good competition." <laughs> I have another friend, I have another friend that, that played for Fresno State and was like, "Man, BYU, yeah, that's that's some competitive ball, man. So you know, make sure that you go out and ball out and and you stay focused because you know they that's a good program. They know what they're doing. All my pastors back home, people from my church." They, I haven't heard of BYU at all, and and they were telling me uh, some of the history of the program. So you know, nationally, uh, from 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 people that aren't even LDS, you got people, you got actual players that have played against, you know, BYU have given them that respect in that regard. So that's a, a great point right there. Brian, you have conversations with the BYU coaching staff, just like we do on the side. What are you hearing from them as they approach the 2015 season in terms of the pressure they feel to perform well against the schedule because of the constantly looming, we want to be invited to a Power 5 conference? You know, I, I, for me personally, I, I don't feel that, they're, that, that, they, that they feel pressured or, or stressed out uh, at all uh, in regards to you know, trying to get into a, a P5. I think that Coach Mendenhall just has high standards, and and he he goes into every single season, regardless of the circumstances, and says our goal is to win a national championship 
you know, getting and we got to do that by getting to the playoffs, you know, winning the conference. Well, there is no conference, so, you know, let's go undefeated, right? Those are all of the goals that he has every single year. So, you know, he, he's not, he's not going to go into the season and say, hey, we got to get into a P5, you know, conference, fellas, so uh, we got we to gotta make sure that we, we have a great season and we're undefeated. No, he's not saying that. He's saying, look, we're trying to win a national championship, man. And to do that, we, we have to go undefeated. We're not in a conference. We can't lose a game. So with this schedule, we have a great opportunity uh, to, to do that. You know, we, we have a front-loaded schedule with a lot of P5 teams, so we got to make sure that we are on our best. And so I don't think that that's where the pressure – it's not stemming from trying to get into a P5. It's strictly trying to live up to the expectations of the program goal. Uh, and so – I remember when I came in 2009, we were so much more focused, I believe, uh, because of that schedule, because we had Oklahoma, we had Sam Bradford. I mean, there was no, there was no time to play around and, and chit-chat. We were all lasered, focused in. And, and maybe that's what this team is, is, is going to have, uh, you know, in, in a few weeks. And maybe that's why Mitch Matthews is saying, hey, we ha- I had the same feel in 2009. I don't know exactly – uh, you know how to how to really talk about it, but the confidence, you know, guys, you know, leadership, guys are ready and prepared because they know what's coming up, for, uh, you know, ahead in these next few weeks. Whenever a team either got picked or, uh, in the case of the non-power five teams that became power five teams, they had a really special season to almost validate uh, the invite. In your opinion, does BYU need such a season to actually create? Uh, validation for an invite in the future? Uh, you know, for, from uh, on, on the surface, like looking, just looking at looking at everything, I would say I would say yes. Um, only because it, 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 you, you talk about relevancy, right? You, you talk about hey, you know what 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 teams would work the best? What, what would fit the best? What would make the most sense to get into a P five? Um, and so when you are winning. Uh, you have a, a special season, you know, maybe you are going to a New Year's Six, wherever the case is, that allows you to stay relevant. Uh, it allows you to be in that, that conversation, that, that consideration. Uh, but, but, you know, when you look deep down into how you're going to get into a conference, you know, it's not going to be by wins and losses. So that's where, and, that, and that's where I'd say no. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, everybody cares about money, which is sad. But, uh, that's that's exactly what these conferences are going to look at. You know, what are you going to bring to the table? What value are you going to add? And if I can't see the Dallas signs, I don't want you in my conference. So, uh, it, you know, it would definitely help uh, by the end of the day if, if you know, if BYU and, and, the, and the, the P5 conference, if they can't see eye to eye, you know, when it comes to revenue, then it's, it's, all, it's, it's all irrelevant. Brian Logan with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're talking about BYU getting into a Power 5 conference, the road to what they specifically need to do to get the attention and become more relevant. Let's switch gears right now, Brian. I'm going to bring up something that uh, your buddy Big B, Brian Keel, said on Friday about BYU's defense needing a vocal leader on the field in 2015. He asked us, who was the defensive leader for BYU last year? I couldn't answer that question, Brian. There were so many injuries and so much movement on that defensive front. I, I didn't know the answer to that. Well, now we're here, here in 2015. They still need a vocal leader on that defense. Who's that guy going to be? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. And uh, I would say before the injuries last year, uh, I, I could point to my man Craig Bills before he got hurt. Um, you know, I know a lot of guys looked up to him and, and saw him as that leader. Um, you know, this year, you got to look at the seniors, guys that are your playmakers, uh, guys that have, uh, you know, guys, guys that have the trust of the team. Um, you got to look at a guy like Bronson uh, to, to, to step up. Can he be vocal uh, be enough, leader. Can he be vocal enough? He, he has no choice. <laughs> he, has, he, he, has, he, has to, he has to step up. I mean, when you look at everybody there, right, if you're getting awards and recognition, I mean, you got all the hype, man. You are the guy. You've got no choice but to step up because your, your younger players, even the guys that, are, that have some, had some, some success, some experience, like Fred Warner, for example, uh, he's still looking up to a guy like Bronson Kafuchi. Why? He's in the media everywhere. Everybody's saying, oh, this is the best 
uh, player that has a chance to get to get to get drafted, right, on the BYU defense. So when you have that hype, uh, you you have to you have to be a leader. You have no opportunity. You have no choice but to do that. Uh, and so maybe if he's a guy that you know lead by example, which he's been the last few years, you know, on and off the field, you got to step it up a notch. But me personally, I would love for the leader to to come from the the Mike linebacker position or the free safety position. Why? Because those are the guys that are getting guys uh, in, in position to, 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 to be successful. Those are guys that are, uh, you know, you're essentially another coach out there. So you, you have to have that respect from your teammates. You have to, uh, you know, make sure that uh, you're, you're, you are looked as an authority. Uh, and so whoever those guys are going to be, I mean, we pretty have a, a, a good idea that it's going to be uh, Kai, uh, Nakua. I mean, those guys I would like to see step up and be that vocal leader uh, for those reasons. Brian, I want you to have that conversation with those guys the next time you see them. Can you do that? Uh, I, I definitely will. <laughs> <laughs> he always does. Hey, great stuff, man. Good to talk to you. We'll see you soon. You too, guys.